Scottsdale County's public defender tells commissioners his two cents on how local court cases can progress more efficiently. KDV.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEV.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEV.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the interim public defender for Scottsbluff County says he believes there are ways to help make the progression of court cases more efficient and save the county money. Last month, the county board agreed to move $110,000 from a general fund contingency line item to the county court, in part to help pay for court-appointed attorneys for indigent defendants. Addressing the board last week about the public defender's office, Mike Meister estimated up to six man hours per relevant county department could be saved on each case with a slight change in handling certain court documents. If they can get us a police report, after arraignment, in other words, they go upstairs with their 20 files they dropped on us today, and they say, here's the, these 20 cases we just appointed the public defender's office, send them the police reports. That gives us an opportunity to look at those reports to see if we want to have a preliminary hearing or if we want to waive that hearing. He says, as it currently stands, reports in felony cases generally reach his office once arraignments happen in district court. Meister believes with some incremental changes, Completion of misdemeanor cases could drop from about 45 days to less than 30, and the time for felony cases could fall from more than 130 to 100 days or less. Well, the 2024 Independence Day fireworks season was busier than the previous year for the Scottsdale Fire Department. Fire Prevention Officer Chris Perales Jr. says between June 25th and the 4th of July, firefighters responded to eight firework-related calls, double the number from 2023. On the 4th alone, Scottsdale Fire was called out a total of 18 times, six of them for fireworks, with both figures a double over the previous year, according to Perales. He also says about 100 pounds of illegal fireworks were seized this year due to the vendors receiving them in error from their suppliers. Those items will be destroyed by the department's bomb technicians in a controlled environment. And Scottsdale County CERT is starting a new program to to provide food and hydration for area law enforcement during extended incidents. The program was kicked off last week with $5,000 donated by Terry Shank, owner of Twin City Roofing, and the funds will only be used to buy food, snacks, and hydration fluid for law enforcement during any kind of emergency that requires it. 1113 Ministries is teaming up with Search to assist in preparing large meals when requested. If anyone would like to make a contribution to this program, they can contact Bob Hessler at 631-0076 to make arrangements to accept the donation. We'll have more news right after this. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. Tri-City Stormwater would like to remind parents and kids that after all the fireworks have gone off, take time to pick up and clean your litter. Without your help, firework packaging and paper can clog our storm drains and the residual metals and toxic chemicals enter and pollute our waterways. Fireworks are a great way to celebrate our freedom, and with a little help, we can keep our water free of pollution. It's our water, our responsibility. Welcome back. Now that the deadline has passed for initiative supporters to turn in signatures, the real work begins to determine whether each signature is valid. Five petitions were turned in by the deadline last Wednesday, including two on medical marijuana legalization and two opposing initiatives for constitutional amendments on abortion. Secretary of State Bob Evans says with hundreds of thousands of signatures to check, it will be a while before we know if each or any of the initiatives actually makes the November ballot. All these petitions that have been signed will be sent to the relevant counties for signature verification. And the counties have 40 days to do that. Um, after the counties have concluded their signature verification, 
They send it back to us. We count the number of valid signatures, and then uh, we make an announcement about what's qualified and what hasn't. Of note, supporters of the effort to place the EPIC option consumption tax constitutional amendment before voters did not turn in signatures. Supporters of the proposed referendum to repeal LB 1402, a Nebraska State Education Associated led effort, have until the end of business July 17th to turn in their petition signatures. And three men are behind bars following a pursuit involving two stolen vehicles across three southwestern Nebraska counties over the weekend. The state patrol says shortly after noon Saturday, troopers learned from Oglala police that they were chasing a Ford pickup stolen out of Wyoming and picked up the pursuit as the truck exited I-80 at Brule. Eventually, the pickup stopped near a county road intersection in Duell County, and the trio fled, with two of them then stealing another pickup from a farm and leading troopers on a pursuit through Duell, Perkins, and Keith counties before returning to the interstate, where Ogallala police successfully deployed stop sticks. 20-year-old driver Michael Ayala and two 18-year-olds were arrested on a variety of theft, drug, and weapon charges after troopers found stolen firearms, credit cards, and methamphetamine in the first stolen vehicle. Life is crazy. Pain is stressful. How can anybody concentrate with these busy schedules? Now you can. This is Ben Moravec coming to you from HydroZen, a float therapy business right here in Scotts Bluff. I'm here today to let you know we now have memberships for $49 monthly. You can guarantee yourself at least one float per month. You know how floating keeps your muscles relaxed, your joints relieved, and your brain clear to think? Now you can float at a reduced rate each month. Inquire today at HydroZenFloat.com or call us at 308-63-FLOAT. HydroZen, unplug and recharge. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, your driving home, our reputation. For the Rural Radio Network, I'm Jason Jorgensen. Carney native and former UNK Loper Manny Reich has been named the new athletic director at Shadron State. Reich is returning to the Cornhusker State after a couple of other stops in Colorado and in Tennessee. I had a chance to talk to Manny today, and he talks about this huge development for his career. First off, thanks for thanks for the phone call and. and getting me on the, on the tape, but uh, my, my wife and I are extremely excited to get back to Nebraska and join the Shadden State family. Uh, got to uh, talk with President Patterson for, for a day and, and really hear his vision and talk about uh, what he sees Shadden State going to be, and um, it, it matched everything that I wanted in a president. It matched everything that I look for with uh, our student athlete experience is what what we want our student athletes to be, and uh, really succeed in, in the classroom, in the community, and uh, uh, in the competition. So um, it matched everything that I was looking for to come back, and and really excited to be back in the RMAC, um, where I've spent probably eight years of my life in, uh, whether it was competing as a student athlete or working in. So um, blessed, to, uh, we're very blessed to, to have this opportunity and. Excited to get back to, to back to Nebraska. What do you see as the biggest challenge for you as you take over there at Shadron State? Sure, I think one of the things that we really need to do is engage our community members and grow uh, grow our booster club as well as um, grow community service. Our student athletes already are, are getting out in the community, but we have to be intentional with it and really make uh, really make an impact and, and show that uh, we're a part of the, the Shadron community. We're not just um, the sh- student athletes from Shadron State. We're part of the Shadron community, and uh, we really want um, fans, we want community members, we want faculty, staff, other students to be engaged, and we're going to be engaged uh, elsewhere in Shadron. We're talking with new Shadron State Athletic Director and Carney native and former Loper, Manny Ryan, who's now the uh, AD there at Shadron State. Man, you're still a relatively young guy to, to pick up this kind of position at your age. It's really got to make you feel good as Shadron State looks to you for leadership. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely thankful for President Patterson and the search committee. Um, Dr. Helmberg did a great job. Um, we're, I can't say thank you enough for them entrusting me uh, to be the athletic director at Shadron State. Um, there's great coaches there. There's great students there, student athletes, administration. Um, to be a part of that team and, and really uh, get engulfed in the Shadron community, uh, I, I can't be more excited and, and thankful for the opportunity. Uh, you have worked at other places and seen how people do things. Uh, you were assistant athletic director at UNK. You worked with former Loberath athletic director Paul Plinsky out at uh, CSU Pueblo. You would spent some time at, at Austin P. I would think all of those stops has really got to prepare you for a, for a job like this. Well, one of the things that uh, I did in my interview process was I talked about my tree and where I came from. And um, that was one of the things President Patterson told me that he really enjoyed the most is I came from John McBride from the start. Um, he, he helped when I was a student athlete. He got me in the, in the role that I'm working in the athletic department with Coach Day. Um, then, it, then it went Dr. Plinsky for a couple of years and then Mark Bauer for, for a few years. And now back to Dr. Plinsky. And, and now I'm with uh, Gerald Harrison. And I can tell you one, each one of those stops has prepared me uh, to take over the reins. Um, there will be bumps and bruises along the way, but uh, luckily I, ha- I have a, a group of people that are willing to help me. And so um, it, it's it's not about me, it's about we. And I can tell you right now I would not be in this position without the, the leaders that I've I've got to work for in my life. I'm sure your family is pretty pumped to have you and your family back in Nebraska. I mean, Shadron's, I mean, it's not a, you know, it's, it's not a 15 minute drive from Kearney, but, uh, you're back in the Cornhusker state. Yeah. They're, uh, they tried to hide the excitement when I told them, uh, that the opportunity was, was a possibility. And, um, they tried to say, you know, if it's okay, uh, it's okay if, if, if it doesn't work out, but luckily it did work out. And president Patterson gave me this opportunity and, um, they, they were jumping for joy. We were back in Nebraska this past weekend for vacation, and um, the uh, the joy that they had were, was indescribable, and we're excited to be back in Nebraska. How about when you take over a job like this? I'm sure maybe one of the biggest things and the first things is if you've got to get around and, and meet everybody and, and find out what everybody's perspective is. Sure, and that's going back to President Patterson. When I saw his uh, introductory uh press conference that was one of the things he talked about was listening to community members and meeting them and that's what i'm going to do as well i'm going to listen we're going to develop a strategic plan for this athletic department that that aligns with the with shadow state college and uh really really make sure that the, the people are involved it's not just like i said it's not me it's about we um we're going to be part of the shadow community and we're excited to do that and that was new shadman state athletic director Manny Wright. They are certainly getting a young, energetic guy who's had success at other stops and certainly knows how things have worked at other places, and he'll try to get things going in the right direction in Shadron. For the Rural Radio Network, I'm Jason Jorgensen. Santa in the pool? Oh, my. Renewal by Anderson's incredible Christmas in July 2024 event is so great that even Santa is shocked. 20% off, no money down, no interest, no payments for 18 months, no payments until 2026. Windows, patio, and entry doors from Renewal by Anderson, and Renewal's acclaim and ensemble lines are the best of the best. Imagine, no payments until 26. Please visit rbawyoming.com now. It's Christmas in July at Renewal by Anderson. It's so good even Santa is shocked. Pet waste and water don't mix. Animal waste decomposes in water, releasing nutrients, which deplete the oxygen fish and other life need to survive and encourage harmful algae growth. Animal waste also has disease-carrying bacteria, making contaminated water unusable. It's easy to prevent pet waste pollution. Simply pick up your pet's waste and dispose of it in a trash can and avoid letting your pets defecate within 200 feet of our community's waterways. Tri-City Stormwater reminds you it's our water, our responsibility.
let's take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Better sleep and better health can be found at Western Sleep Medicine in Garrick. Since 2006, Western Sleep Medicine has offered the lowest cost sleep testing either in their independent sleep laboratory or the privacy of your own home. You have control over your health care and your out-of-pocket costs. All insurance is accepted for a much lower cost than the regional option. If you need a sleep study, ask for Western Sleep Medicine. They've helped thousands of people over the years and want to help you. Western Sleep Medicine. Better sleep, better health. Welcome to Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. Whether you're a wine enthusiast, a whiskey sommelier, a tequila connoisseur, or you just love your beer, Kelly's has the best selection of what you're looking for. Family owned and operated since 1946 and right on 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Come see us today at Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. And remember to be a good neighbor. Don't drink and drive. Kelly's Liquor, West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And finally tonight, after much anticipation, the Valley's first Dunkin' Coffee and Donut Shop opened its doors Monday morning in Scotts Bluff. Store General Manager Cody Barge says they'll be open daily from 5 a.m. until 8 p.m., but the masses were eager to be among the first to patronize the new store. Uh, well, we opened the doors a couple minutes early because we had people calling asking that if they could stop by before work at the hospital, so we opened up early for them, but been busy. Um, obviously we have some kinks to work out, but um, we just thank everybody for their patience. Uh, customers have been great, um, service has been very steady, uh, and just we want to keep it going. He tells KDB News it's been relatively smooth sailing so far, but a few hiccups along the way. Barge says there will be an official grand opening celebration this weekend. So our grand opening event will be Saturday, this Saturday the 13th. Um, the radio will be here from 9 to 11. That's when we're going to do all our prizes and stuff that we have going. So, With more than 12,000 locations worldwide, Dunkin' is one of the world's largest coffee and donut shop chains across the globe. Well, that is it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.